Right then guys, it's PSL here and I'm here for the 6th episode in my Formula 1 2003 Reverse Grid Race Series. Last time out we had the Spanish Grand Prix and what a lucky win it was for Juan Pablo Montoya. He won the Spanish Grand Prix entirely due to Kimi Raikkonen's retirement. Raikkonen should have had that Grand Prix sewn up, he really should have and I still feel extremely bad for him because... That was a guaranteed race win, and he lost it through no fault of his own. However, Juan Pablo Montoya, he still did incredibly well to finish, well, what should have been second, ended up being the race win, and he dominated the Grand Prix ever since he moved into first place. And Juan Pablo Montoya is currently second in the Drivers' Championship, and it's fully deserved because he has been one of the most consistent drivers this season so far. And unlike Kimi Raikkonen and David Coulthard, he hasn't had poor qualifying performances to help him out. He's always started towards the back, and he's quite often finished towards the front. So, Montoya, certainly one of the best drivers, but also one of the luckiest. We got Fernando Alonso in second on the starting grid because Fernando Alonso made an error in qualifying. He went out into the gravel, lost a few seconds, which, in a race, wouldn't be the end of the world. Losing a few seconds, a trip through the gravel, not the end of the world. But, in a one-lap shootout qualifying format, where you can't rectify your mistakes, and also, a few seconds, let's say, three or four seconds lost, in a lap, certainly in a short lap, at the A1 ring, that's the difference between first and last, and that's why Alonso is starting in second. The only reason he's starting behind Verstappen is because Verstappen had a gearbox issue in qualifying, so didn't set a lap in Q2. Further on down the field, David Coulthard, once again another subpar qualifying performance. He'll be starting in seventh this Grand Prix, so hopefully his car can hold out for him. Although Coulthard, like Montoya, has been quite lucky with reliability. It's pretty much all of the other top team drivers who haven't been so lucky. Certainly Barrichello, Schumacher and Raikkonen haven't done so well, and and Ralph Schumacher as well actually, it's just Coulthard and Montoya who have been lucky with reliability, but Coulthard made a minor mistake in qualifying, not to the same extent as Alonso, but a minor mistake, ran wide, lost a bit of time, and it just adds further fuel to the fire, because I said earlier on in this series that I reckon the one lap shootout format doesn't really go, doesn't really play to Coulthard's strengths. And again, this is another example of Coulthard not performing so well this season in qualifying. Yeah, I do reckon if it was still the one hour 12 lap format, he would qualify much further towards the front. In fact, in Q1, Coulthard beat Raikkonen. It's Q2 which matters though, and Coulthard unfortunately let himself down. Further on down the field, we got Ralph Schumacher who, in fact, let himself down in Q1. Ralph Schumacher, for whatever reason, didn't set a lap time in Q1. Maybe he couldn't due to a car issue, but for whatever reason, he didn't set a lap time in Q1. That means, of course, he was the first person to set a lap in Q2, which gave him the disadvantage, so Ralph Schumacher, yes wasn't given the perfect track conditions, especially compared to all of the other front runners. and yes, he'll be starting from 11th place in this reverse grid Austrian Grand Prix. And further on down the field, it's fairly standard, Heidfeld had a fantastic qualifying session, and then here we are, Montoya, Raikkonen and Michael Schumacher, the three quickest drivers I would say in this season so far. They have been extraordinarily quick, Barrichello has also had his moments as well. But anyway, without further ado, let's see how the 2003 Reverse Grid Austrian Grand Prix plays out.
Welcome to the A1 ring in the Styrian Mountains. An absolutely beautiful day here. Perfect conditions for a motor race. And away they go. Now, first corner here is an uphill right-hander. We've seen plenty of incident there over the years. Are they all going to make it through safely this year? <laughs> Well, Alonso has made it through safely, and so have quite a few of the others. In fact, no, they haven't. There's been drama at the first corner. So, in fact, both McLaren teammates colliding with each other. There's no damage there, but there is damage on some of the cars. I believe a BAR driver has got some damage. So, let's find... I think it might have been Villeneuve, but let's watch Button because he's in the middle of the field. So, from 14th place... In fact, yeah, there was a staggered start there, to be honest, but you would, to some extent, expect that when you're starting towards the back, although not that blatantly. Oh, right, a car went up in the air. Button got rear-ended. He still got his front wing, though. So, there was a McLaren. That must be David Coulthard, who went up in the air. And, in fact, of course, David Coulthard started from 7th place, so he would be the McLaren who was further up towards the front so here we are from David Coulthard's perspective hopefully we should be able to start to piece together what happened so the left hand side of the grid just made an awful start which I think is why Button was able to make up a couple of places Coulthard lost a place oh that was just ridiculous that was utterly utterly ridiculous that's the worst driving I've ever seen Coulthard just rammed the back of Ralph Furman. Well, let's let's get a look at this from an external shot because I'm truly, truly baffled. Because of course there was a really bad start on the left-hand side of the grid, and Coulthard backed off. Fair play to him. Stayed behind the Jordan driver, but then he just lost all of his patience when he got to the first corner because he just went on the brakes, back on the throttle, and yes, went up into the air and round the wrong way and then of course crash into his teammate for good measure so that's Coulthard's potential race win out the window Jack Villeneuve in 10th place so we'll see Coulthard ahead just go up into the air turn around 180 degrees oh and that's what happened that's what happened right so Villeneuve kind of got slapped off the track by the rear end of Coulthard's car and in fact there is still one angle we need to see and that is well one of the Jordans lost his front wing I'm not sure I'm genuinely not sure which one it is I think it's Ralph Furman well Coulthard of course went into the back of Ralph Furman so I think Furman might have got speared into Justin Wilson or maybe into the Salbra bed I think that's what's gonna happen oh actually wow no the front wing just became dislodged from the impact with David Coulthard and there is Ralph Furman running without a front wing and that's holding up one of the Ferrari drivers so we finally pieced together what happened at the start of the Grand Prix so there is the Jordan driver of Ralph Furman who was just holding up a large portion of the field or well, 15th place yeah finally people are starting to filter past although there's Barrichello who's finally getting past Villeneuve no sorry Button who was really held up, and there was Jarno Trulli, the winner of the San Marino Grand Prix, who was still stuck up by Furman. So the Renaults are, well, were briefly bookending the field with Fernando Alonso leading the Austrian Grand Prix, Jos Verstappen in second, Mark Webber into third place. The last time we saw Mark Webber this far up the field was in Australia, and he finished there. Heinz Alfredson in fourth, Cristiano D'Amato in fifth, Justin Wilson in sixth, already. There was a Ferrari towards the front, Michael Schumacher in ninth, Ralph Schumacher in 8th place, Olivier Panis in 7th. And then there is Jacques Villeneuve in 10th place, so there's a bit of a gap actually from 9th to 10th. In fact, there is Michael Schumacher getting past his younger brother Ralph, so Michael is up into a points place. This is typical, the second I stop talking and the second I cut away, Michael Schumacher passes Panis, so we should see... Up the inside, into turn one. Quite late, actually. That was a late decision on Michael's part to make the move. But 
there you go, that is Michael Schumacher up into 7th place, and it should be fairly easy for him to pass Justin Wilson, in fact it should be even easier, of course, you know, we're talking a Ferrari with a Ferrari engine against a Minardi with a old Cosworth engine. Jos Verstappen is still in second place. Mark Webber hasn't even really caught up. Well, a, he has caught up a bit to Verstappen, but at a much slower rate than I would have expected. So here we go, Michael Schumacher, of course, Ralph Schumacher has now passed Olivier Panis. That was a given, to be honest. But yes, Michael, a like-for-like -like move. Inside line, first corner. Wilson has to give him the space, which I thought would allow Ralph to get past, but no, in fact, Ralph... In fact, Ralph might get passed down into the second corner, well, up into the second corner. That would be the better way of describing it. But no, Justin Wilson, for the time being, is still held the final points place. No, sorry, the second to last points place. But I think soon he's going to lose that position to Ralph Schumacher. Hang on, this is so weird because I only stopped talking about 10 seconds ago. But I was just watching Ralph Schumacher, I then cycled up towards the front of the field to keep an eye on the Verstappen-Weber battle, I then cycled back about 10 seconds later, and Ralph Schumacher isn't there anymore. So I assume that Ralph Schumacher was retired, but I was literally watching him. It's like the second I take my eyes off of him, he retires. So Ralph Schumacher in 8th place, doing well as well, the highest placed... Williams driver and yes, literally about two seconds after I stopped watching him, he retired. That is Ralph Schumacher with a BMW engine failure. That is so gutting for Ralph. So that means that, oh there you go, the live image. Ralph out of the Grand Prix. So, of course Alonso, Verstappen, Weber, Frentzen, Demata. It's all fairly standard from here on in, although Michael Schumacher was caught up to Demata. I think, is this going to be another like-for-like -like move? No it won't. Maybe it will happen on the next lap, who knows. But Wilson is in 7th place. Olivier Panis is back up into 8th place with Jacques Villeneuve in 9th and Barrichello in 10th. No, hang on. Juan Pablo Montoya has also retired. Again, something else happens the second I stop talking. I may as well just keep talking. Um, in fact, there he is, Montoya out with an engine failure, so within about a minute, Williams have had two engine failures. So Montoya, I don't know what camera angle that was, but there he is, Montoya, out of the Grand Prix of an engine failure, and I think that's on the exit of Turn 1. Pass. This is great racing. Schumacher looks like he's getting ready to pass to Matter. He's up alongside. Oh, and look at that. He's powering past. And the two cars touch. A definite coming together. Ferrari's Michael Schumacher is doing his best to keep the other car behind him. Doing his best to keep the other car behind him. I mean, come on, James Allen. I don't know why. You entertain the thought that Michael Schumacher is going to be re-overtaken. Not in this game, not in this series. That just isn't going to happen. But yes, Michael Schumacher passed Demata and then Frentzen. So it took him a while to pass one car, but of course, once he passed one, the second was just a few seconds away. So Barrichello is up into eighth place, so I'm expecting a pass on Justin Wilson to happen any time in the next few seconds. In fact, let's keep an eye on Michael Schumacher because we know how quickly he makes overtakes and there you go. That is Michael Schumacher up into third place and I'm sure in just a matter of seconds that will be second place for him. So, Jos Verstappen, he's defended second place for, well, pretty much the entirety of the Grand Prix. Ever since, I mean, Fernando Alonso took first place in a matter of seconds and then Verstappen has held second place ever since, but... No one, no one can defend for Michael Schumacher. Not even Barrichello, not even Montoya, probably not even Raikkonen. I don't think we've actually seen that many on-track battles between Raikkonen and Schumacher, but we saw in Brazil Michael Schumacher pass Montoya like he wasn't even there. Barrichello has always been second to Michael Schumacher, even in the context of this game, and there is no way that Jos Verstappen, the former teammate, 
to Michael Schumacher, actually. There is no way that Jos Verstappen in the Minardi is going to be able to keep Michael Schumacher back. But do you know what? Even though I said that, for the time being, he has done exactly that. Right, I don't know how or where this happened, but Justin Wilson has been passed by both Barrichello and David Coulthard. So that means that there was an overtake made not at the first corner, which I didn't see coming, but yeah, unfortunately I did miss it. So for whatever reason, Justin Wilson, he's dropped down to ninth place. So that means the driver in the final points place is now David Coulthard. So let's have a rundown of the points positions, because I don't think we've done that for a little while. In fact, I think Kimi Raikkonen is about to move up into 10th place. And right, okay, well that was handy. So Michael Schumacher is in 3rd place, still behind Jos Verstappen. There's Fernando Alonso. Look at the race lead he's got. He's heading up to the second to last Jochen Rint corner. Verstappen is heading up to the first left-hander, so we're talking a third of a lap behind... It's a fastest lap by Alonso. Alonso's just passed the start finish line. And I think Brundle just said that Alonso set the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Meanwhile, Verstappen is still there. And wow, 1.7 seconds a lap slower. That's that's how much slower Verstappen is than Michael Schumacher. Yet, despite that, Michael Schumacher still can't get past Verstappen. Last lap. Last lap they were, in fact, Michael Schumacher was 200 slower. So Michael Schumacher, he passed Mark Webber incredibly easily, but Jos Verstappen, who has proven himself to be one of the best drivers defensively this season, and when you're driving a Minardi, you kind of have to be, and he's still keeping back Michael Schumacher. This is extraordinary. Where is Barrichello is still in seventh place, now trying to pass Cristiano De Matta. Michael Schumacher is really pushing hard now and looks set to get past Verstappen. And there it is, Rubens Barrichello passing Cristiano De Matta for sixth place. And has that, in fact, no, it hasn't because De Matta's got round the second corner and has only lost one place. So De Matta is still in seventh with both McLarens directly behind him. And Barrichello. Barrichello's making movements up the field. Michael Schumacher still hasn't gotten past Verstappen. This is extraordinary. Let's have a look at the gaps. So, Michael Schumacher and Verstappen, they're coming up towards the second to last Jochen Rent corner. And Alonso's coming up towards the second corner. Probably about half a lap ahead. I honestly reckon, even if Michael Schumacher passed Verstappen now, he wouldn't have enough time to catch up and pass Alonso for the race win. So provided that Alonso doesn't have a reliability issue, I think he's won the Grand Prix because even Michael Schumacher, with 11 laps to go, won't be able to catch him up. In fact, to be fair, even Michael Schumacher can't pass Jos Verstappen. The only driver to have passed Jos Verstappen this entire Grand Prix has been Alonso and he did it on the first lap. Further on down the field, Barrichello oh, nearly passed Mark Webber, hasn't been able to do that. Did pass Heinz Alt Frentzen though. So Barrichello is making movements, he's passed the Sauber driver of Frentzen. And soon, I think, well once Barrichello passes Webber, then we're going to have both Ferrari drivers simultaneously trying to get past Verstappen. Unfortunately, I was only able to capture the end of this move, but that is De Matter moving down into ninth place, and that is Coulthard into 8th, and Raikkonen now into 7th. And it's just strange that, because that was an overtake made at a corner that wasn't the first corner, and Michael Schumacher, you would assume the most prolific overtaker, and in many ways he is, because he started, I think, in stone dead last, and he's moved up to 3rd. But all the overtakes we've witnessed of Michael Schumacher have happened at the first corner, including this one. So Michael Schumacher has finally been able to get past Jos Verstappen and take second in the Grand Prix. Rubens Barrichello is fighting for position with Mark Webber. Oh my word, what has happened there? Villeneuve's got no rear wing. So Villeneuve was cruising around in 12th, and I think... 
This will be something we have not seen happen since the very first canonical reverse grid race I recorded on Championship Edition. That was, you know, the Bahrain Grand Prix in my F1 Championship Edition series which I recorded about two and a half years ago and yes, that is a rear wing failure. I haven't seen that in years. But yes, in the Bahrain Grand Prix, Fernando Alonso was heading down the start finish straight and his rear wing just flew off. And this is only the second time I believe we've ever seen it happen. That is Jacques Villeneuve just cruising, minding his own business, and then just bang. Schumacher's just coming around the Nicky Lauda corner. So coming up towards the end of the lap, meanwhile Alonso, yeah, just around turn two. So, you're talking roughly, roughly half a lap. And I just do not see Schumacher catching up Alonso in that time. Seven laps to catch up half a lap. That's just not going to happen. So, yeah, Fernando Alonso, pending no reliability issues, is almost certainly going to win this Austrian Grand Prix. Schumacher in second, Verstappen third, Weber fourth, with Barrichello now in fourth place, having passed... Mark Webber and I think unfortunately that is going to open the floodgates in fact no it won't no it won't I think I think Mark Webber is going to hold firm and there you go Mark Webber still in fifth place but he has still got both McLarens directly behind him so it's not exactly completed he's still got a lot of work to do in the remaining six laps Barrichello will surely have a go and see if he can pass the Stappen. He's looking left, now right, and surely this is... Yes, he's passed. Great move. But can he hold on to this position, or will the other driver repass? I'm sorry, Martin. Do you know what you're talking about? <laughs> I, I honestly never thought I'd say that about Martin Prondel, but he was entertaining the thought that Jos Verstappen was going to repass Barrichello. Not in a million years. Mark Webber. Mark Webber. Faster than before through sector one. Minardi's Jos Verstappen. He's doing his best to keep the other car behind him. Verstappen has lost out and is now behind David Coulthard. Yeah, behind David Coulthard and also Kimi Raikkonen. That was a tough gig. Jos Verstappen, I thought it was going to be difficult for him to keep Raikkonen behind. And David Coulthard for that matter, but... He hasn't been able to do it, so that's Verstappen down to 6th place. Fernando Alonso is coming up towards the end of the Grand Prix, and look at this. Alonso, oh, auto race director. Alonso's coming up towards lapped cars. There's Jacques Villeneuve in 15th place up ahead. So, Alonso, I mean, he's starting to have traffic problems. Thankfully, he's going to finish the Grand Prix before it really affects him, but I thought this is something that would only impact the Ferraris, McLarens and Williams, but Fernando Alonso, what a fantastic Grand Prix, and he's won it. Fernando Alonso, the winner of the 2003 Austrian Grand Prix. Michael Schumacher possibly could have competed with Fernando Alonso. Unfortunately, Alonso... That mistake in qualifying just meant, well, second place, good launch, up into first. Clean air from there on in. Schumacher, he had a lot of cars to pass, and Michael Schumacher passed every single car in the field, bar one. So Schumacher's in second. Barrichello passing, well, lapping Ralph Furman to finish in third, and then it's Coulthard who will come home in fourth, beating Kimi Raikkonen come the end. And that was by no means guaranteed, but Coulthard won out in the McLaren battle there. So that's Coulthard, then Raikkonen, Verstappen, Weber, and Frentzen will take the final points positions, with De Matter just about missing out on a points place. But yeah, Verstappen, Weber, and Frentzen all drove incredibly well, and so did De Matter, to be fair to him, although they did finish over a minute behind Alonso. So then, that was the 2003 reverse grid Austrian Grand Prix. What a fantastic drive from Fernando Alonso. Although it is another example of how a poor qualifying performance can effectively gift a decent position, or a race win even, to a driver. I do have to say though, Alonso, his reliability this season has been impeccable. Or his car's reliability, I should say. 
It was a race win that, yeah sure, was gifted by a poor qualifying performance, but was not lost due to a reliability issue. So on to the Drivers' Championship, and David Coulthard is still leading it, and in fact, his Drivers' Championship lead has extended largely due to Montoya's retirement. Schumacher is now second in the Drivers' Championship, overtaking Juan Pablo Montoya. So, David Coulthard, a driver who, on the face of it, I wouldn't say has done extraordinarily well this season, but like Montoya, He's just been consistent, I mean, I'm saying this despite the fact that Montoya retired from this Grand Prix, but Montoya and Coulthard are both drivers who have been fairly consistent, quite often finishing towards the front, and they've had very few reliability issues. In other news, Fernando Alonso has rocketed up the order to now be fourth in the Drivers' Championship, overtaking Barrichello, Raikkonen and his teammate Jarno Trulli. Jos Verstappen overtook his teammate Justin Wilson, Weber got a couple of points so he's overtaken Justin Wilson, and the only other news, and this is quite important and something I didn't realise, is that Heintoud Frentzen, finishing in 8th this Grand Prix, has scored his first point of the season. In the Constructors' Championship, McLaren are still leading it, and their lead has maintained at 5 points. McLaren are on 53 points, they were 5 points ahead of Williams, they are now 5 points ahead of Ferrari. Ferrari have made up tremendous ground, overtaking Williams and getting very close to McLaren. Renault have also made up great ground as a result of this Grand Prix, catching up to McLaren, albeit by only 1 point, but importantly, Renault overtook Williams. Williams are on 39 points. Renault are on 40, so Williams, that double retirement really let them down. Ralph Schumacher, I think when he retired was in 8th, maybe 7th place, even if Ralph Schumacher stayed in 7th place and Montoya still retired, Williams would still be ahead of Renault in the Constructors' Championship, albeit by only one point, but due to Williams having both of their cars retire from the Grand Prix, they're now down to 4th in the Constructors' Championship. Minardi have overtaken BAR in the Constructors' Championship, so they're now 5th. Jaguar have overtaken Jordan, and that is pretty much it. Of course, Sauber have gained an extra point, so that means Sauber have got double the points of Toyota. And that is pretty much everything from this Austrian Grand Prix, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and next time, well, next time it is the Monaco Grand Prix. What a race that is going to be. The Monaco Grand Prix will be happening in the next episode, so I'll see you guys then.